What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Happy freaking new year. We made it through 2020. Thank God for that. Um, you know, I hope you're all staying really optimistic about what's to come in 2021. Tomorrow I've got my appointment to gather up my documents and apply to stay here in France for another year. If you guys are interested in like maybe becoming an expat one day, like when things kind of calm down, I'm going to be doing a live stream with another YouTuber. She's an American expat living in the south of France and you know, just what it's like, kind of like constantly being in limbo about your position in a country. So keep an eye out on my community tab and my social media. I'm going to be, you know, leaving it open for you guys to ask any question you'd like. So we could talk about expat life and what that entails. If you decide to go down that road one day. Anyway, um, this is what happened on last week's episode of teen mom two, which was also the finale episode. We started off with Jade filing the police report, then calling her friend Kelsey, who ironically asks her when enough is going to be enough for Sean. I say ironically because you know, the same question can be asked of Jade. When is Sean enough of Sean's behavior going to be enough for you? You know, clearly not now because they're back together. You know, she claims that he ruined any chance of reconciliation between the two of them. But like I just said, they're back together. So not exactly. Meanwhile, in West Virginia, poor Allie got strep throat for the second time. And strep throat is such a B I T C H you guys. It is so painful. So for her to get it for the second time in such a short time frame is really painful to, to hear. You know, Leah, and Corey then discuss how the other girls might be bringing the virus, the strep virus back home from being in school and all these different activities. So they decide to pull Gracie from cheer. Leah also wants to pull Addie from her activities, but she obviously doesn't talk to Corey about that because that's not his daughter. And um, she also talks about not wanting the other girls to resent Allie for this decision. And she also doesn't want Allie to feel guilty that the other girls can't go ahead with their activities because of her. And then down South in Florida, Brianna has been crying broke all season, but she somehow managed to scrape enough money to hire a private circus experience for her children after renting out a house for Nova's birthday party a couple of weeks earlier. She couldn't even be bothered to properly wear her mask through the show, but I digress. In the middle of the show, Devon leaks her number as he shows the text message exchange between the two of them. And she starts getting a million phone calls and texts from random people. And she storms out really upset about the whole thing and under understandably so. Then in Chelsea land, she hints at wanting to leave the show at last. And we get a little bit of a montage about her time here on Teen Mom 2. Then we head on over to Dover where Kayla and her pigtails talk about how embarrassing the parking lot effing scene was. Remember she was like, Javi was trying to meet up with me in the Wawa parking lot to bang me. She says that she did Lauren dirty and she should have just reached out to her directly about what it was that Javi was doing behind her back and that she feels horrible that Lauren found out this way. So she texts Lauren, but Lauren at that point hadn't responded yet, but Javi did text her telling her to have his cheating ass back, which to me kind of indicated that something did happen between the two of them because what else would there be to say? You know what I mean? And I'm sorry, but when they zoomed in on her arms texting, I gasped. Y'all, she looks like a seven year old ready for picture day with her pigtails on the top half. But then when they show her bottom half, she looks like a trucker impatiently waiting for their gas station coffee and scratch tickets. Just as I'm trying to process what it is that she is visually serving here, Lauren texts Kale and tells her to call her. So Kale walks away to call her off screen. Now Leah tells Addie that she's going to be pulling her from dance class in order to protect her sister Allie. And Addie complains that she was just starting to make friends there. And then, you know, it was one of the sweetest scenes of the entire season and maybe like in Teen Mom history for me anyway, when Addie goes, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a scientist so I can help cure diseases for people with disabilities. My heart grew 10 sizes that day. You know, like I thought it was so freaking cute. Like Addie is a really sweet and thoughtful, caring girl when she is not being coached by her mom to be as obnoxious as possible. It was really beautiful. Up north in Indiana, Sean sits down with Jay's producer and then he explains that the fight between the two of them was uh, happened because he went out with a friend all night and then when he came back Jade wanted him to submit to a drug test, which he had already agreed to. You know, he already told her any time. But this time, after he meets up with this friend who probably does drugs, he's like, I'm not doing a drug test because that's going to give you too much control over me. I mean, come on. And then he also claimed that he didn't punch out her window or whatever. He was knocking on it to be let into the house. And it just so happened to explain like he cannot explain himself 
in a way that makes sense. Like this lie was so freaking evident. In my opinion, this guy was getting high with his friend and he did not want to take a drug test because it would obviously come back positive. Because there's no other explanation for him to be going haywire like this over something he previously decided to commit to doing to maintain his status within Jay's house. Now back in Florida, again, Brianna and her friend who isn't Shirley uh, go to get a new phone, but on the way there, they play one of the voicemails a weirdo left her calling her an ugly hoe and all sorts of other like nasty things. Honestly, if you called or texted Brianna, you need to reevaluate your life. This is a television show. We're not personally involved with these people. Meanwhile, on Devon's side of the segment, him, his snake, you no, know, not that one, a real snake, y'all, and his friend talk about him leaking Brianna's Number. Of course, he's like pretending it's not intentional, but listen, we save the numbers of people we regularly talk to on the phone. And if you don't, and you're gonna screenshot a conversation, the first thing you look is to make sure that that stuff is blurred out. I think he did it on purpose, and I think that it wasn't fair of him to do it on purpose. And like Roxanne said a little bit later, it is illegal to be cutting out that kind of information about people. And he also told on himself when he said, oh, but I do hope that like thousands of people blow up her phone. Come on, dude. Anyway, um, he talks about her pretending to be a single mom for the public image that it provides. It makes her feel good or whatever. And he actually even accuses Brianna of being jealous of her daughter, Nova, for having a father in her life because that is something that Brianna never had. To me, that is just, ouch. The fact that you would put that kind of an accusation out about your daughter's mom on television. I could construe that as going a little bit too far in my personal opinion. Like, ooh. Anyway, um, back in Dover, Kale claims that she didn't want her call with Lauren to be on television because she has humiliated her enough, but I'm not buying that excuse because Lauren clearly wanted to confront Kale on television in the prior week's episode when Kale started running away. I bet she wanted this call on air too, and Kale decided to use her power play to make sure that it wasn't aired. Um, you know, honestly, what I suspect happened was that Lauren went in on Petty Betty, and um, you know, maybe she even had some more intel about her and Javi, like actually do it, like hooking up in some sort of a way behind her back. And Kale does not want that kind of information out there, especially because the paternity of her child, Creed, has already been called into question so many times, right? Now, Lauren called her out for humiliating her on camera on other occasions. If you guys recall, when Kale found out that they were engaged, she got into her car and gleefully, gleefully uh, proclaimed that Javi had been cheating on Lauren since she was pregnant. Like she's very, very miserable. So it was right of Lauren to call her out. One thing that really annoyed me and showed Kale's true colors in this conversation was that she refused to fess up to anything that was happening between her and Javi behind Lauren's back. Earlier in her scene with this producer, she was talking about how she should have gone to Lauren woman to woman to tell her everything that was happening. And now here she is with the opportunity to do that. And what does she do? She refuses to fess up to anything. She refuses to tell Lauren anything. That poor girl Lauren has suffered so much between dealing with Javi and dealing with Kale as well. They are both trifling ass people, but you know, again, she does have to take at least a little bit of responsibility here. She knew Javi was trash when she got with him. She knew he was the third choice. He was already cheating on you at the very beginning of your relationship with two other women very publicly. So, you know, don't act like you're the 1000% victim here. Like you walked into this, eyes wide shut, girl. Sorry, but it's true. Anyway, back in West Virginia, we find out that Gracie cried a lot when she was told that she couldn't go to her cheer practices anymore off camera. I don't know why Leah didn't just have her stay at Corey's house at least a little bit longer throughout the weeks so that she could keep with her cheer. You know what I mean? Like maybe spend two weeks or three weeks out of the month with your dad instead of coming here so that you can do your cheer and keep up with that stuff over there. I don't know, I feel like they could have compromised a little bit better here. I think in Addie's case, it's difficult because, I don't know, does Jeremy like spending time with this child? Because the storyline has always been that he doesn't spend that much time with her and he's always out here and there for work or whatever. So I can get her pulling Addie out of dance, but Corey has always been more than willing to be there with the girls anytime for as long as is necessary. So I felt like that would have been a pretty good compromise on Gracie's end, because we know she's really dedicated to that cheer stuff, but I digress. Anyway, Chelsea invites her dad over to talk about wanting to quit the show. When they laid it out, like about it being like, 
um, most of Chelsea's adulthood and all of Aubrey's childhood, I started to feel really bad for all of these kids because Aubrey's 11 years old now, you guys, which means she's got seven more years of being a quote unquote child. But like, technically no, like her childhood is gone. Like she didn't get to have a private childhood. So now she's got a couple of tween years and a couple of teen years pri to privately be able to live. But the majority of this childhood stuff is already gone. Anyway, Chelsea says that it's very sad because she genuinely loves her crew. She's gonna miss working with them. And then Jade tells her friend about Sean coming back to apologize, then going to his car to scream and rock himself. Um, it was a very, very odd uh, depiction of events there, but I definitely don't doubt her story. Sean is a little bit of an oddball. Now, um, they swear like mad in front of the children per usual. I really hate when the teen moms do this. I just think it's, it's in such poor taste to be swearing like that in front of children. Back in West Virginia again, Leah spoke to Gracie about quitting cheer and I thought it was a really sweet conversation with Gracie saying that she was willing to give up her cheer in order to save her sister's life. But of course, Leah had to turn into her usual annoying preacher self. She's like, do you love your sister? How much do you love your sister? Like, stop putting it on. Like, it's okay to just have a normal, candid conversation with your child without it having to be some kind of performance piece every time. I also really didn't appreciate her asking Gracie to read her personal goodbye text on camera. I was like, really, these kids can't have anything to themselves? anything, not even a little goodbye text message to their cheer class. Now, um, in Florida, again, Brianna and her family complain about Devon leaking her phone number, and yes, Roxanne called that man the N-word, y'all, but I'm not gonna sit here and act, act shocked that, um, you know, Hispanic Americans use the N-word. I'm only shocked that she was dumb enough to use it publicly. It's just very, very stupid. I don't know, and I don't understand the appeal of this sort of language. And now in the very final scene of the episode, Chelsea announces to her producer that she was leaving the show. And at this point I was like, okay, good, go. Like, I'm so tired of hearing about it. Like every scene of hers, this episode is the same conversation. I'm like, we're not done yet. Thank you for 11 years of um, interesting content, uh, Chelsea. But yes, I, I think that she overstayed her welcome a couple of years ago. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing who they replace her with because I'm ready for the show to be juicy again, y'all. We need actual drama. In fact, you guys already know, I would be happy to see all of them go and then us restart with a new batch of 16 and pregnant girls. Not even these new 16 and pregnant girls, but the ones I grew up with. You know what I mean? Actually, no, those girls are kind of old now. They're pushing 30 like me. Who knows? Who knows, you guys? Anyway, that does it. A recap of what went down on last week's episode of Teen Mom 2, the season finale. But as usual, I'm more excited to hear what you have to say about it. So please make sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And we'll chat once again. Have a very, very happy new year, you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.